Okay, let's get started. Hello again, everybody. Uh, good morning. Happy Friday morning. Very overcast. I'd rather <laughs> be in bed. It's a very nice day to actually sleep in, but we're here and we, we're going to do it. So uh, let's get to it. Um, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. Share the OneNote. And that's not us. That's Calc 2. Okay, so this is what we spoke about last time. Some questions there. Um, let's do a new page. All right. All right, so uh, by way of updates, uh, what do we need to talk about? So I'm setting up the, um, <laughs> Stephen feels the same. I assume he's talking about my comment about a good day to sleep in. It is a good day to sleep in. Um, anyway, your tests are next week. They will be on, Wednesday, last day of class. They will be online. They will be through the Top Hat platform. So that's the platform that we're going to use to do the exams remotely. Um, so I got a lot of the technical stuff set up yesterday. I, I'm, I'm, you know, it's been a while since I've been optimistic about anything, but I, I really feel like it's going to go well. That being said, I will probably do some sort of test run on on like Monday or something with the classes, even though I'm, I'm giving other classes uh, a lot of, I'm actually giving exams like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, classes that I have to set up, but I'd like to try some sort of uh, test run anyway. So maybe I'll actually do in your recitations to do a test run you guys can actually see. So expect an email over the weekend about Top Hat. It's gonna invite you to the platform. You're gonna sign up and then you're gonna be able to use it. So basically, you're gonna log in, you're gonna see the exam on that platform, you're gonna do it on paper, and you're gonna indicate that you've done the problem on the platform. And then you move on to the next problem, do it on paper, indicate that you've done the problem on the platform, and then at the end, you're gonna scan it. There's gonna be an app that goes along with it that you scan all everything that you wrote and you send it in to me and then I will actually uh, grade it. So that's what we're... Got an error message here, I'm not sure what that is about. Um, so that's kind of how it's going to be. And you will get emails over the weekend. Um, I don't know, maybe today, tomorrow, maybe Sunday, about uh, signing up for that and what's going to go into that. So, um, yeah, so that's the first thing I want to say. So, you know that. So, I don't know, should I, should I write that down? Uh, maybe. Uh, so, do, do, do. Now, if this works well, and at the same time, I don't get a definitive answer from the math department as to how to administer finals, chances are this is going to be how we would do the final as well, um, except that would be a much longer exam. So your test will be about an hour long. The final is going to be about two hours long, and it's going to be like the, uh, it's going to be like test one and test two kind of crunched together. So if you know all your material from test one and test two. The final should not be that bad. So look out for an email. I think Alejandro was sleeping in, he just came in. <laughs> so it's a, it's a good day for it, what, I can, what can I say? Look out for an email uh, over the weekend.
do you sign up? Yes. 2020, yet another account we have to sign up for. Um, I, I think uh, uh, all the information you'd need to know about setting that up would be in the email. So I, I guess at this point, I won't write anything else down, but uh, look out for that. Yeah. That being said, are there any other questions? So I'm not sure if you guys got up to um, integration by parts yet. So I believe the lecture since we spoke was about applications of integral where, it's, where it spoke about error between curves and the mean value theorem for integrals and uh, application of integrals to motion like physics. Uh, so talking about distance traveled and displacement and of course position, velocity, acceleration, all that good stuff. And average value of a function. So those were in the lectures right after. And after that, I believe it was integration by parts. So uh, did you guys get up to, what, what lecture did you get up to? Did you guys continue? And were there any questions? Oh, so you got up to, you got up to lecture 36. Okay, so I think that was just more substitution examples and uh, properties of integrals. Okay, were there any questions on that then? Any questions you had on what you, uh, you watched? I think that wasn't clear. Are you guys here? <laughs> okay, what about the uh, practice exams? Did anyone do one of the practice exams? Yeah, so Dylan did it. It went okay. How did it feel? Any questions from the practice exams? No, ah, went, went okay. Okay, cool. I, I don't remember. So yeah, for the review for test two, I think I put the solutions up. I don't think the solutions are up for the final other than one of them, um, but um, and, and they probably won't, I probably won't put up the solution. So if you have any questions on that, you'd have to reach out to me directly. Um, so yeah, anyone else did the practice final? How'd it go? Any questions? Any concerns? Okay, so some people are planning on doing it today. Okay. So besides that, there is nothing.
Maybe I'll throw out some questions. Uh, let's start easy. All right, what about this guy? How do you find the integral of that? Uh, let's make this a little bit nicer. Okay, go. What do we do here? Ideas? takers for that integral? Start by evaluating cosine squared x. What does that mean? Find some other questions here. Um, well, ideas? What do we do? Is it that you guys not not sure how to proceed or are we just shy? I don't know. D 
do we do we know what uh, do we know what the antiderivative cosine is? Just regular cosine. What is that? All right. That is uh, that is sine x. Okay. Let's see. So we do know that. Okay, so that that is a little bit of hope there because obviously a common mistake would be to think that this is the integral of cosine squared is just sine squared x plus c, but that would that would actually be wrong. Okay, so at least that's going for us. So um, probably not sure how to proceed, but we know that we can't just plug something into a square when the square is not in the rule. So that's good. Um, so, uh, here's a, a hint. There's a convenient trig identity that can help you get rid of the square. So that would be the way to proceed. Think of uh, trig identities that might help you out here. Guesses on that? Any trig identities? What trig identities do you know that involves a cosine squared? Well, one minus sine squared, correct. But um, is having a sine squared better than having a cosine squared? Like, like, do you know what the integral of do you, do you know what the integral of cosine of sine squared is? Would that question have been easier for you? What's that? Well, the hint would be use a trig identity. And then you're going to be like, oh, well, we can go back to the cosine term. And we'll just go back and forth between these for no, there's a different uh, there's a different formula. Okay, so the common trick with these guys is the half angle formula or double angle formula. It's the same formula. It just depends on how you solve for it. Half angle. Right. So that is basically the formula that tells you how to find half an angle of a trig function. But really what it boils down to is you can write a cosine squared theta as a one half one plus cosine two theta. Now, really the half angle formula as it's written, it's really saying that cosine squared x is equal to one cosine squared of x over two, right? So that's where you get the half angle is equal to one half one plus cosine x. Right, so that's what the half angle formula tells us. But of course, if I just replace this with a, a regular angle, it doubles the angle here. And so the half angle formula turns into the double angle formula. Right? And, and normally you do this, the square root of this thing, but. Um, and there's also a version for the sine function, the sine squared. Sine is equal to one half, one minus cosine two theta. So these are called the half angle slash double angle formulas. These are from a uh, trig class. And that, that would be where you would go. So if we had this guy,
your first step would be to rewrite this as one half one plus cosine two X where the two X is the angle. All right, now can we complete the problem? Okay, substitute u where? Why are you seeing a substitution? Where would the substitution come in? In the, in the original problem, before the trig identity, like here? Well, what would you substitute? Okay, and then, so if your u equals cosine x, so if you went over here, so if you went over here and did u equals cosine x, just right off the bat, your du would be minus sine of x dx, which means your dx is going to be minus du over sine of x. And so uh, if you went and you plug that into your integral, you would have the integral of x goes from zero to pi over four. And you would, if you're replacing the cosine of x with the u, that would be u squared. And then here you would have du, well, minus du over the sine of x. And so what would you do with that sine of x? So this is not going to be true. Well, a part of this is going to always be true. So when you're thinking of doing a substitution, there are a couple of things that you should have in mind. So obviously the substitution is going to come when you're looking at an integral that is a little bit more complicated, complicated in the sense that you don't have a general formula like this guy that will help you figure it out. So that's why you would even consider a substitution in the first place, because if you had you known a formula that just gives you the answer, you'd have just used the formula. So when you're considering a substitution, there are really two things you should have in mind as a calculus one student. Um, the first of which is, I need to make a substitution that is going to make this thing simpler, it should get easier after the substitution is said and done. And usually by replacing an expression with a single variable, it makes that happen. Um, so you have to be able to see something that's going to get a lot simpler in your integral. Now, of course, replacing the cosine with a u, that's awesome uh, because we can deal with u squared a lot nicer than cosine squared. However, the second consideration that you should have is that you should somehow be able to find the du somewhere else in the function. You see, we don't only replace the function, we also have to replace the dx. So we need to make sure that once we take derivatives, the derivative itself is going to behave nicely with the function. And usually what that is, is we'd want the derivative to be somewhere else in the function. Now, this isn't always the case. In Calc 2, you'll see situations where the derivative isn't readily apparent. However, you would be able to manipulate the derivative in some way to get it to actually work out. Now, for this particular problem, I don't really see a nice way to manipulate the sine function. Now, yes, uh, granted, uh, you could actually think of the sine as the square root of one minus cosine, but then you now would kind of lose the benefit of making this thing simpler, because now you have that guy. And here's why the 
calculus two student doesn't really have to worry about this second condition so much because that integral is actually an integral a calc two student would be able to do. However, they'll need a whole other technique to do it that you guys haven't learned, something called trig substitution. Um, but for you guys, you haven't learned that. On top of that, even if the Calc 2 student was to go this route, is that it is a highly inefficient route. It's just not worth all the trouble. It is far easier, and I do mean far easier. When you guys go to Calc 2 and, just, and you learned about trig substitution, Try to remember this and come back here and try to do that guy with trig substitution and then compare your answer to what we did. Uh, this is much better, a lot better. So one thing you should realize is that when you're doing substitution, you have to have a game plan. There has to be certain things that you can see working out in order for the substitution to work out. Your substitution is supposed to make your integrand simpler. At the same time, the derivative of the substitution should be convenient. In calculus one, convenient means I can literally see it somewhere else in the function. So if I had a problem like this, it is a completely different situation. If I had cosine squared x times sine x hanging out over here, then that's a completely different situation. A u substitution is definitely the way to go here because I would do u equals cosine x, I would do du equals minus sine x dx. Then my dx is going to be equal to minus du over sine of x. And so when I go in and I plug that in, the cosine of x becomes u, that's a u squared. The sine of x hangs around and my dx becomes minus du over sine x. But hey, it's really convenient to have the sine x here because those guys cancel. And so now this integral just becomes minus the integral of u squared du. And that's easy. That's what we can do. Now, um, this is not going to work out here because you don't have the sine x to help you, right? So when you take your derivative after u sub here, it's not convenient. It's not going to work out in your favor here. Yes, you'd get an integral, which in theory is not impossible. It can be done. It's just going to be a lot harder. And on top of it, integrating something like this is something you would learn in the next class. So it is not going to be the way to go here. Um, so just so you're aware of that. Um, so this, I guess, is just an extra example that I'll leave up here. Um, this guy uh, could work in Calc 2, but not here. We don't know enough, and we're not going to know enough at the end of this course. Um, but uh, this guy, this is uh, sort of the way to go, using the half angle formula. OK, so now, technically speaking, and I believe virtual Javon spoke about this, although I can't remember in what lecture. Um, a substitution would be how you tackle this guy. Now, the one is not an issue. Uh, you know how to integrate one. But uh, you also will realize that your formula doesn't have a double angle. You know how to integrate the cosine of x. Here, once I put the cosine of 2x, that becomes an issue. Um, but it's not really an issue. So. How would you deal with this part? So if you want the integral of cosine of 2x, a substitution u equals 2x is what would work here. Your du would be 2dx. And so your dx would be du over 2. You would go and you plug that into the integral. You would get cosine of u times du over 2. Now, that derivative plays very nicely with the integral. In fact, he's just a constant, which we know we can factor constants out. That's not an issue. And now we actually know a formula for that. That's 1 half sine of u. And now we replace that u with the uh, 2x. And so that is going to be the antiderivative of that. Um, and so this guy would become 
1 half times x plus 1 half sine 2x between 0 and pi over 4. And what do we do at this point? Plug in, plug in who, where? Plug in zero and power over four, and then do what? Subtract, who do I plug in first? So we first plug in the power over four. minus, um, let's move this to the side. And minus, uh, we plug in zero. Okay, so this is one half uh, pi over four plus what's this would cancel? You get sine of pi over two. What's sine of pi over two? Sine of pi over two. What's sine of pi over two? Don't plug into your calculators. I don't know why you guys are taking so long. Is that plug into your calculators? Sign of power two. It's one, right? So sign of power two is one, and then we're multiplying by a half, so that's a half. Now we have zero, which is zero. Uh, sine of zero is zero, so that's actually our answer. And in fact, you 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 could simplify that a little bit. I mean, you could like factor out, you could factor out a quarter if you wanted to, something like pi plus, um, no, that should be four. I want to, that should be a quarter when I multiply out. I, I combined the two and the four, so now I'm looking at the eight. Uh, it should be a four over here. So factor out a quarter, that would leave me with pi, and over here that would leave me with two. So it's one eighth pi plus two. Okay, so yeah, took us a, a while, but a lot of lessons from that problem. Um, grand scheme of things, not a difficult problem. This is actually a well-known strategy to actually use that. Um, you do the same thing for sine squared, in fact. Um, so this is actually a substitution problem in disguise, but you, you don't do the substitution right off the bat because it's not going to work out. What you do is you first use an I trig identity and then you can use substitution on the other part. That being said, I do want to bring your attention to the fact that when your substitution is just a constant times x, what happens is you end up dividing by that constant. So you can actually think of these as some general rules here. If you wanted to integrate, say, cosine of 
a constant times x. It is always going to end up being one over the constant times sine of the constant times x. Of course, assuming that constant is not zero, but you get the idea. Because you do a substitution, u equals kx, your du would be kdx, so therefore your dx would be one over kdu. You'll get a cosine of u, which integrates the sine. Um, similarly, uh, the sine of uh, kx is going to be minus one over k cosine of kx. So this, th these are things that you could know by heart and you won't have to go through a substitution. So if someone asks me, what is the, the integral of cosine of uh, 7x plus 5? I would immediately be able to say, oh, well, that's just 1 over 7 sine of 7x uh, plus 5x plus c. Right? So I, I can do this in very quick order um, because it's just a thing you know. Whenever your sub, whenever your substitution, um, is something like u equals k x plus b, then you'd end up dividing by k. So in general, if you have some integral f of f, f of something like kx plus b, so it looks like a line, you could, in theory, always do u equals kx plus b. And what that will lead to is 1 over k times the integral of f of u du. Now, hopefully, that's easier than the original, or you might have, have to do something else there. But that's kind of something that's always going to happen. So that's something that you can know. Um, yeah. I was going to throw in some more problems. I was looking up some optimization problems and some other things. Um, but we're almost out of time. But that, when it comes to competing integrals, there's a lot of uh, things that can go happen. That's so why you guys really need to do the practice test so you can know. So, because earlier I asked, uh, any questions? Everyone was all fine. I put this down and now it's like, Obviously, there's a lot we still have to learn here. So you guys probably don't know all the things you don't know, which is why the practice tests are very useful. Don't wait too long to do the practice test. Um, get through that. Uh, the, the goal was to get through it like yesterday, but uh, try to get through it today um, because you want to know ahead of time. You want to know right now, oh, on the practice test, I didn't know what to do here. Or I thought I knew what to do, but then Javon's solutions look different. So obviously there is an issue. Um, so you do want to uncover your issues before testing. Um, so go through the practice test. Um, and I would even do extra. So when you have you, the practice test would show, well, I, I don't want to show it now because not everyone did it. I was going to uh, look it up. So the practice tests, you'll see that in the practice test, there will be a problem where it asks you a bunch of integrals. And you know that some of them will have substitution. So automatically, that kind of indicates to you substitution in general is something I should know how to do. So once you go through the practice test, if you feel a little bit shaky on it, go to your textbook in the section on integration by substitution. Pick some challenging problems, right? Don't pick problem one, two, or three. Like, I'm not going to ask you about problem one, two, or three. Go kind of deeper, problem 15, problem 25. Um, pick a random problem and, and swap that out for the integral in the test and then do the test again. See, could you have figured it out? Um, or, or better yet, you know, form a study group and pick problems for each other. So that way uh, you have the added benefit of being surprised by the question. So if, if you're the one looking up a problem for you to do on a test and say so you might look up, oh, I think I'll do that on the test. While you're writing it down in order to do it, you've already started thinking about it. So there's going to be a time lapse there that makes it unrealistic for a testing situation. However, if someone else did the problem for you and then they're like, boom, here's the problem. Oh my God. All right. Right. You, you had no pre-planning. 
you had no conception of what that problem would be like before the moment you saw it and you had to do it. And that's what a test is like. So in general, you do want to practice in the way that you want to perform. Um, you're not going to see the test before the test. Uh, so probably seeing the questions you want to practice before you actually sit down to practice them kind of makes that situation an unrealistic preparation uh, thing. Now, it still can be challenging. You can still get a lot of work out of that, uh, good, decent work out of that, but it's not as good as it could be. So probably uh, you, you want someone else to pick problems for you and then just, okay, just pick five integration problems, don't tell me what they are, and then boom, put them down in front of me and I'm gonna kill them all in 10 minutes, right? So you kind of wanna challenge yourself in that way. Um, so once you know the timing that I gave you for the test, which when you go through the practice test, you'll understand, um, you just, you have a goal in your mind. I should be able to solve these, this many problems in this time, which means on average, I should be taking this many minutes to get through an integral problem. And so someone gives you a list of five integrals. You have a time in your head for how long that should take. And I think it, based on the timing for the test, five integrals, shouldn't take you more than 15 minutes. So that's, that's also a potential issue. So if you could get through the five problems, but it took you 20 minutes, 25 minutes, that's also an issue. Um, because in the test, the timing is going to be important. So uh, we're almost out of time, but yeah, I've got a lot of traction on this problem, a lot of discussions and hopefully that kind of opens your eyes to certain things but of course uh most important announcements and i'll probably yeah it depends on if i have the time because i'm actually giving real exams on monday and tuesday so i want to know when this is going to fit in but ideally uh, i'd probably do another practice test for you guys and actually have you take it online on this platform so you can kind of see it. Um, and if that doesn't work out, I'll probably try to set it up by the time recitation comes around on Tuesday and you can actually practice in the recitation session. I'll instead do like a practice quiz where you do the practice quiz online. Um, just, I, I just want you guys to get used to using the platform before the actual day of the test. Um, so look out for the email regarding that this weekend. Um, you'll either see it today or tomorrow, latest Sunday. Um, sign up for the account, look around, kind of get familiar with it. And um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so that problem, it's kind of a, it, it's this, this problem, to be honest, is, is one of those things where if you've never seen the solution before, it will take you a while to actually figure out this was the route you were supposed to take. So, um, it's one of those problems that's easy and hard at the same time. It's easy because everyone knows, everyone who's seen it knows that this is the strategy and it's in, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that hard. But if you've never seen it before, it's gonna be hard to actually figure out what that, that this was the route you were supposed to take, the half angle formula. Who'd remember that? Well, Javon told you guys to remember it. At least half, I'm sure virtual Javon told you to remember it. Um, so, yeah. Um, we'll wrap up there. Make sure to get through the practice test. You do, um, so I don't, I'm pretty sure I asked in a trig integrals on the practice test as well. So maybe I asked an easier one and you might've felt very comfortable with, uh, inter trig integrals. Um, but now this is like, hmm, maybe I'm not as comfortable as I should. And, and that's what you want to be realizing now. You want to know, hmm, I'm not quite as comfortable with this topic as I thought I was. I thought I knew everything here. Okay, now you're going to go back and you're going to look at things new. And if, if you, and try to be wary of anything that seems too easy. Like things get easy after a lot of practice. But if right away you do a topic and you're like, ah, this is super easy, I got that. But be careful, try to actually find a problem that's challenging to you. You want to make sure that there's no blind spots there. Um, so, 
yeah, keep going. And, and like I mentioned, uh, use your textbook as practice. There are lots and lots and lots of integration problems in your textbook. So um, run through a few problems. And if you do the first few problems and they're very easy and you get through them, keep going. Keep going to a problem until you find something challenging. That kind of, oh, I'm not really sure how to do this one here. Those are the good ones. Those are, those are the problems you want to stick around at because they will be very instructive, not only in terms of specific techniques, but just as an overall conceptual understanding of how a method would apply, when I would apply it, that sort of thing. Um, so yes, we did use substitution here, but if we had applied substitution to the same problem in a different way, it wouldn't have really helped. Doing this first, then applying the substitution is, was the way to go. Um, so things like that you'll pick up on just by doing a lot of practice. And yeah, I encourage you to do that. So be sure to do that. Get through the practice test today. Try to see where you are. Try to see what problems uh, gave you trouble. Um, if any problems give you trouble, don't panic. Oh my God, I'm going to No, just be like, okay, you now have a to-do list. I'm going to look at this topic because I had problems on it on the practice test. You're going to brush up on that. You're going to rewatch the lectures. You're going to do problems in the textbook. And then you're going to keep going until, all right, I think I got it now. Then do the next practice test because there, there are two practice tests for the, the exam that's up. And ideally, in an ideal world, I'll be able to get a third to you guys by early next week. And you can try that out on the online platform. Um, in a semi-ideal world, um, I would at least be able to get a quiz that you can do online during the recitation session on Tuesday. And um, otherwise, the next, time, uh, the next time you'll see testing material will be the actual test. But between now and then, you do have a lot of ways to get practice in um, from then on. So um, yeah, we're, we're pretty much out of time, but I, I think, uh, think we learned some good lessons today. So let's uh let's wrap up um and if you if you don't have another class after this it's a it's a good day to sleep in you can actually go back to bed um but then wake up and do the practice test okay all right so um yeah uh we'll kind of stop there any any questions concerns before we uh sign off All right, uh, we will stop there and uh, hope you guys have a good weekend and stay safe. I'll see you guys next week. And uh, I guess that's it. Um, have any other questions, you know how to reach me by email. And uh, so we'll stop there, so.